assistant professor from LJIT. So students, this is our second lecture of chapter number 4 which is design of plate gutter. So students, in the last lecture, we are discussing about what is plate gutter. So, you all know that rolled section which is ready made section available in the market having maximum depth of 600 mm. Okay. So, whenever the span of bridge is very large, then the bending moment which is generated in the span and shear force acting on the span is much heavier to resist 600 depth of gutter. So, at that time, when the span of bridge is greater than 24 meter or some length, then the bending moment which is generated on the, that girder and shear force is much higher. Okay, so at that time you have to provide it. You have to provide it the depth greater than 600 mm. So at that point you have to made such a girder to resist that heavy moment and that heavy shear force. Okay, so that's why. In the, next, in the last lecture, we are discussing about what is plate gutter. So, you can see that a plate gutter is an eye beam built up from plates. Okay, so there are basically three plates. This is your horizontal plate, this is your vertical plate and another horizontal plate which is at the bottom of the web portion. Okay, so this horizontal plate is called as top flange this is wave portion and this is bottom flange okay so the connection between the wave and flange is with the help of bolting welding or riveting okay so students it is already discussed that a plate girder is a deep flexor member to carry heavy loads okay and after that we are discussing about the applications of plate gutter in which there is total four applications it means plate gutter is provided in a railway bridge highway bridge in plant where the heavy loads is acting on the bunkers and at last we have to use in our last chapter which is gantry gutter so as a gantry gutter this plate gutter is also to be provided. Okay, so in the last lecture, we are discussing about what is the plate gutter and application of it. After that, we are discussing about some advantages and disadvantages of plate gutter. After that, we are discussing about the elements, elements of plate gutter in which total nine elements. Okay. So, these all the nine elements will be discussed in our last lecture and after that we are discussing about types of stiffener. Okay, this theory is basically directly given in your IS code. So, there are two types of stiffeners. First one is vertical stiffener and another is horizontal stiffener. Now, in vertical stiffener, there is another two types of stiffeners. First one is end stiffener and another is intermediate stiffener. Okay. So, you can see that this is end stiffener. This is intermediate stiffener. So, this is a two type of vertical stiffener and one horizontal stiffener. So, you can see that this is your horizontal stiffeners. Okay. So, students, in the last lecture, we are discussing up to this slide. Okay. Now, we are moving further our example point of view so whenever you have to design any structural component so first of all you have to find out load on that member so first of all you have to find out the load but its self fit its self fit is also to be considered so there is one empirical formula is given in the book that the self fit of plate gutter is calculated with the help of this equation. 
this equation is small w is equal to capital W divided by 200. So students, you all know that your small w is uniformly distributed load UDL. Okay, so whenever you have to find out sulfate of thread gutter, then this load is in the form of UDL and this load is unfactored load. Okay, so you can see that your small w is factored sulfate of gutter in kilonewton per meter. But there will be some mistake. This is unfactored load. Okay, now what is capital W? Capital W is total factor load on the gutter. So say for example, this is your gutter having a span of 24 meter. Students, you have to make your shape. Make sure this is the example number one in which your span of plate gutter is given as 24 meter. This 24 meter span subjected to UDL of 20 kN per meter which is your dead load and it is clearly mentioned that this dead load is not including the sulphate. Okay, so first of all we have to find out sulphate of plate gutter. Next load is given as line load. Now line load is also given in the form of UDL. So Total UDL which is acting on plate gutter is dead load plus live load. Okay, next is point load. So, in the question, it is clearly mentioned that this span is 24 meter in which there is two point load is acting which is from 6, six meter from both the ends. Okay, so students, this is the data given in your example number one. So, basically, First of all, we have to find out sulfate of gutter and then this sulfate of gutter is added in your given data. And after adding your data, you have to find out shear force and bending moment which is generated in the plate gutter. Okay. So students, after finding out SF and BM with the help of maximum shear force and maximum bending moment, First of all, you have to choose your trial and error sections. So, this trial and error sections in which there is three components are there. This is your horizontal plate, this is your vertical plate and this is your another horizontal plate. So, this horizontal plate having called as flange, this is web and this is another flange. Okay. So, this is your top flange. This is wave and this is your bottom flange. So first of all, you have to find out optimum depth of gutter which is denoted by small d. Okay. So students, the equation of small d is nk by f by h to 1 by 3 in which your m means maximum bending moment for which you have to design the section. k is your value which is depending on wave thickness. Okay, now what is the wave thickness? So there is number of checks for the thickness of wave which will be discussed in the next slide. Fy means yield stress. So the value of yield stress is given as 250 mega Pascal raised to 1 by 3. So with the help of this equation, we have to find out the maximum depth of section. So this depth of section is your small d. Now, small d plus 2 thickness of flange gives your total depth of section. Okay, so students, this is the optimum depth of gutter's equation. After that, this is your top flange and this is your plate. So, what is the area of flange? The area of flange is, this is width of flange and this is thickness of flange. So, the area of flange is BF into DF in which the area AF first of all find out with the help of M into gamma M0 divided by FY into D. Okay, so what is M? M means the moment for which you have to design the section. Gamma M0 is your partial safety factor. Fy is the yield stress 
and small d small d which is equal to optimum depth which is find out in this equation okay so with the help of these two equation we have to find out our section size okay so students this is the basic dimension of our selected section but your selected section is safe or unsafe it is check okay so now we have to check our selected section is safe or unsafe so first of all our first check is check for minimum wave thickness so for minimum wave thickness there is main two checks are there first one is check for serviceability which is given on page number 63 of is 800007 and another is compression flange buckling requirement this check is given on page number 64 okay after that another check whether our selected or our trial and error section is safe or unsafe so our second check is shear buckling resistance of wave okay so students this equation is given on page number 61 in which there is two criterias are there in which d by tw it means your depth to thickness ratio is greater than 67 epsilon or not okay so this is your second check your third check is for buckling of wave plate so students this is the most important check okay because there is two method in this check first method is simple post critical method this equation and this method is given on page number 59 okay so on page number 59 the equation is vn by vcr now what is vcr so the clarification of vcr is given on page number 60 and another method is tension field method so the tension field method is given on page number 60 so students there is no any clarification regarding which method is used in our gq point of view then you have to use simple post critical method because this method is much easier than the tension field method okay but in case of any method but in the case of there is a clarification regarding you have to use simple post critical method or tension field method then you have to solve that example based on given data okay so this is your third check and your last check is anchor force so students in the last lecture we are discussing about there is two types of stiffeners in which first is vertical stiffener and another is horizontal stiffener and in vertical stiffener there is another two types of stiffener first one is end bearing stiffener and another in intermediate stiffener so this stiffener this vertical stiffener takes how much loads so that load is find out with the help of anchor force force means load okay so students in this example or in this chapter we have to check total four checks okay so this will be discussed in the later in our example number 1 so students in the next lecture we are discussing about the design step of plate girder and after that we are starting our example number 1 which is the welded plate girders okay so students this is the end of today's session